Okay, so in this playlist of videos, I'm going to talk to you about solving linear, and equa linear equations. So what does it mean to solve an equation? Well, solving an equation means to find the value of the variable to make the equation true. And the variable is really just a posh way of saying the letter that we have, and it's an equation if there's an equal sign. And to solve the equation, we want to find out what x equals or what other letter it might be being equal to. In other words, we want the x or the letter by itself. So just to kind of start off with some of this theory that we've got here, we want to think about what operation we do to get x by itself. So if you saw something like x plus 4, how do you get rid of plus 4 to end up with just x? Well, the opposite of doing plus 4 is take away 4. If you did a plus 4 and a takeaway 4, they disappear, they cancel, and you just get left with x. You can probably see what's going to go here, but for the next one, if it's x minus 3, the thing you need to do is to add 3 to it to make it become x. This means that x has been divided by 2. And to get x by itself, the opposite of dividing by 2 is multiplying by 2. So we're really thinking about these inverse operations. This one means that x has been multiplied by 5, and the inverse of multiplying by 5 is dividing by 5. And I'm going to write that in two ways. You could write divide by 5, or you could write divide by 5, almost like a fraction where you would normally have a number on the top. This one, although it looks a little bit different, if you wanted to get x by itself, this 7 that we have at the beginning is secretly a positive 7. So to get rid of this 7, you would want to subtract 7. So it looks kind of like this one, but the numbers are the other way around, but it's still going to work by subtracting 7. This one's pretty similar to the x over 2. It's got a quarter outside the front. Now, this actually means x divided by 4, or a quarter multiplied by x. And the way you'd get rid of this quarter is you would multiply by 4, because a quarter multiplied by 4 will just give you 1. So that would be the inverse here. This one, to go from x squared to x, the inverse will be to square root both sides, to square root the um, x squared. And if you wanted to go from the square root of x just to x, the way you do the inverse of a square root is you do the square of it. So this little bit here is where you would put whatever number, and I'm saying that you would square it. So as long as you can memorize these inverse operations, you're going to be totally, totally good on this topic. Once we know how to get x by itself, we can apply that operation to both sides of the equation. Well, why do we have to apply the operation to both sides of the equation? When I say operation, I mean like adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. Well, here's an equation that we have that's true. And do you remember I said we're going to try and do things to keep the equation true? Well, if I wanted to keep 4 plus 6 equals 10, if I wanted to keep it true, perhaps by adding on 5 to both sides, if I added 5 to this side... I would have that 4 plus 6 equals 15, which doesn't make sense. So you also need to plus 5 to this side. Then you would have 4 plus 6 plus 5, that's 15, equals 15. So if you add something onto one side, you have to add it to the other side in order to keep it true. Now subtracting, you can see that if you just subtracted from this side, you would have 4 plus 6 take away 3, that's 7, you'd have 7 equals 10. So obviously you also need to subtract on both sides to keep this true. I think those ones are pretty obvious, but the multiplying one, we're going to think what might be different. So for the multiplying, I'm going to try it with an example of multiplying by 3. Now, if I multiplied 10 by 3, I would get 30. And so what I'm actually going to need to do is multiply this whole thing by 3. So one of the ways that you might write this is you might put brackets around it, and you might say, great, I'm going to multiply this all by 3, so I'll do 3 times that part. The alternative way that you might think about doing this one to make this also true is you could multiply each part by 3, each term. This is a term, this is a term, and then this is a term. So if I times that by 3, and if I times that by 3, I would also times that by 3. Let's just check this one works. You would have 4 times 3, which is 12, 6 times 3, which is 18. So 12 plus 18 is 30. And this one works because with brackets, you do these first. You get 10 times 3 and 10 times 3. Last of all, this dividing one, if I'm going to show that it divides both sides, well, if I divide this side by 2, 10 divided by 2 is 5, I would have to divide this side by 2. 4 plus 6 divided by 2, that's 10 divided by 2, so that's equal. And I guess the other way that you could think about this is instead of dividing the whole thing on the left-hand side by 2, if I divide that by 2, I could divide that by 2 and that by 2, and it should still work. So 4 divided by 2, that's 2, plus 3 equals 5. And then last of all, I've put a star with this because this is kind of going to take us away from linear equations. But just the same idea that if you square that side so that you get 10 squared, you can't square this one and square this one. It just doesn't work. You would get 16 
plus 36 equals 100. And that is not true, so I've drawn this line through here. So the way that we would do this one is you don't square them all individually, you would actually have to square this one. And then just like the multiplying one, it needs brackets to be squared as well. So, <coughs> so the main thing to take from this is either you do the same adding on both sides, the same subtracting on both sides. You multiply everything by the same thing as the other side, or you divide everything by the same thing you do on the other side. And now we're going to apply this to solving some one-step equations. They're called one-step equations because there's only going to be need there's only going to need to be one thing to do. So, like I said, we're trying to find out what is the value of the letter that makes this true. Now, look, I know you can say straight away that a is equal to nine because nine plus three equals twelve. But that's not what we're learning here. We're learning how to do a method that will help us to do some more tricky kinds of questions. So, watch the way that I do this. Now, sometimes I put like a little line through the dotted through a dotted line through the equals sign to remind me that whatever I do over here, I better do it over here as well. Now, earlier on, we said to get x by itself, if it looked like this, you would do the opposite of plus 3, which is take away 3. You can see we said that here, right? If you had something with a plus 4, the opposite was take away 4. So to get the a by itself, I am going to take away 3. I'm going to take away 3 from this side, and I'm going to take away 3 from that side. I'm crossing it off because if you add 3 and then take away 3, it just kind of disappears. So what you get left with is that a is equal to 12 take away 3, which is 9. So I'm using this idea of crossing something off over here and then doing the opposite on the other side. So you can see what might happen here. I'm going to do that dotted line down the equal sign to remind that if I do the same on, would do the same on both sides. The opposite of take away 4 is plus 4, so I do plus 4 to the other side. This leaves me with a b equals 1 plus 4, which is 5. And we knew that was going to be the case because 5 take away 4 is indeed 1. Here's an example where I want to get rid of the 7, and if you remember from earlier on in the video, you can get rid of that positive 7 at the beginning just by taking it away from both sides. So this leaves me with c equals 10 take away 7, which is 3. And of course, 7 plus 3 does equal 10. This one has a division by 4, and if you remember from earlier on in the video, we said these ones, you undo them by doing a multiplication of this number down here. So this one, I'm going to get rid of this divide by 4 by multiplying by 4. So because I'm going to get rid of this divide by 4, I need to multiply by 4 on the other side, which gives me d equals 5 times 4, which is 20. And in the original equation, 20 divided by 4 is 5. Let's have a look at this next one that we've got here. This time we want to get rid of the 7 that's at the front. So to get rid of the 7 that's at the front, I'm going to cross it off to say I'm going to get rid of it. And the way we get rid of that is dividing by 7. Now I said you could either write it like that, or you could write it like a fraction, but it both of them means 28 divided by 7. So e is equal to 28 divided by 7, which is 4. And 7 times 4 is 28. So this one is the same, it's just kind of written the other way around. It doesn't matter if the letter is on the right-hand side, we're still trying to get it by itself. So I'm going to get rid of that 2 by dividing by 2. This leaves me with 14 divided by 2, which is 7, and I've only got the f left on that side. So f is equal to 7. Now, you can just leave it as 7 is equal to f, because it means the same thing as um, f equals 7. Okay, so this one down here, we're going to get rid of. Again, it's written in sort of reverse. I'm going to get rid of that takeaway 4 by crossing it off and writing plus 4 to the other side. So this leaves me with g over here, and 13 plus 4 is 17. This one, again, it's just written the other way around. There's no problem with it being written like that. You don't have to do this dotted line down here, so if you don't want to do that, that's absolutely fine. And I'm going to get rid of this plus 10 that we have, and I'm going to get rid of that plus 10 by doing subtract 10. So I'm going to get left with, on the right, an h, and on the left, 5 take away 10 is negative 5. So I put this example in to show you it's perfectly okay to have negatives. And it works, because if this was negative 5, if I do negative 5 plus 10, you do get the answer 5. We're keeping the equation true. And this last one's a bit sneaky, because we're not actually going to solve this in any other way than just looking and seeing what is the same about these things. Well, you can see that they both have a 1 on the top. They're both a division. This one is a 7, and there's an i right here. So I just think by comparison, we can see that i must be equal to 7. That's the only way to make these things true. So this one's a little bit different um, to some of the others.
So here are some questions I want you to have a very quick go at. You're going to pause the video and try these ones here. Okay, so I might not do the dotted line down the equal sign for all of them just to show you that it isn't always needed. The opposite of plus 4 is take away 4. So I just get that a is equal to 12 take away 4, which is 8. I know you could do this without this method, but we're learning it to do harder questions later on. So for b, I'm going to do the opposite of take away 7, which is plus 7. So b is equal to 2 plus 7, which is 9. In this one down here, the opposite of divide by 3 is to multiply by 3. So c is equal to 36. In this one, I'm going to do the get rid of the 4. Now to get rid of that 4, I will take it away. That leaves me with d equals 11 take away 4, which is 7. So this one I'll do without the dotted line. If I want to get rid of that 3, I just divide by 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5. I should really have done this all in the same colour. So let's just quickly switch and put that in here. So I get E and 5. I kind of liked in the dotted line, so I think I'll continue with it. I'm going to get rid of this 12 by dividing by 12. 40, 24 divided by 12. 24 divided by 12 is 2. So 2 equals F. This one that we've got down here, I'm going to get rid of the 12 by subtracting 12. So g equals 12 take away 12, which is 0. Now it's perfectly fine to have 0 as an answer. That's why I included this example. I'm then going to take away the 30, and I'll do 15 take away 30. 15 take away 30 is negative 15. So h is negative 15. And then for this last one, it's the comparison. You can see they've both got a 2. So the thing that i must be equal to, just by comparison, i must be equal to 11 to make that true. So in the next video, we're going to look at more complicated ones. Complicated ones. We're going to look at two-step equations. Found this video helpful? Then why not drop it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. If you'd like the next video in the playlist, you can click here to be taken straight to it. And as always, wishing you the very best for all your studies.